Welcome to the Laurent Collective Podcast, where we go deeper than just surface talk. Each week, we'll explore everything from family, business, creativity, culture, and faith. To make sure not to miss an episode, be sure to subscribe and hop on to Instagram at Laurent Collective to chat with us about this episode. Summer is here, which hopefully means slower days, some time off, and more family time. With this in mind, we're doing a summer series of shorter podcasts with some quick thoughts to encourage you. We hope these are fun for you to listen to while you enjoy your summer. We have a rule in our house with our kids um, that we have always had, but something funny happened recently that we thought we'd share with you, so we've kind of adjusted the rule. (laughs) A little bit. A little bit, not really. (laughs) Um, So our rule in our house is that all questions are welcome from our kids. Like, you can ask us anything, and mom and dad will answer to the best of our ability. Sometimes we may have to research because we don't know. Um, but that you can always ask and that we have the right to tell you too, that like, that's not appropriate for you to know yet. Like Mm. we do have that, but we will, we will always try to give them an answer that is age appropriate. Obviously having a 14 year old and having a seven year old, there are certain questions that they might We have lots of questions. Yes. That are very different. And that Mm. also like, if you're, if you are embarrassed about the question, just ask us in private. You don't have to ask in front of your siblings, um, or that kind of thing. And so we've, we have that all questions rule in our house. I don't even know how we came about that. I think probably observing friends that have older kids and their conversations. And I think, I think too, we've always wanted our house to be safe for our kids Yes, and for them to, to feel like that yeah that they can be open and honest and like they don't have to be a shame is not ashamed is not the right word but like they don't have to be afraid to ask us Mm -hmm. anything really i mean if they have if they have questions or thoughts or anything we we wanted to create a space and and a type of relationship with our kids where the, the the communication lines are open at all times Mm -hmm. exactly that's basically it yeah i mean really and, you know, we made, when we had Zane, we made, a, you know, a pact, I guess, between us too, that we would not lie to them. Um, and so that has also made for interesting things that we were like, oh, that rule's now coming to effect. But, um, some, sometimes they ask us questions, we ask them questions back, which yeah, we'll a little bit, because sometimes yeah. they actually think they know something and we might give them an answer that's way too much information that they don't need to know yet. Yeah, so I think that, that that's really important to say that because I think, you know, Yes, we we definitely don't want to lie to our kids, but I think the way we do that is when they ask us certain questions. We, we always that follow up question is well, tell me about what you know. What, do you, what do you think or what do you know about that first, and then that kind of helps frame the appropriateness for our answer exactly. in some ways. Because so. we may have then given them too much information that maybe they didn't need at that time. Yeah. Um, a, a time that I can think of that this first came up. Okay. For us, I'm sure there was more before this, but this one really sticks out to me is when Zane, I think he was five. Oh, we should say right now. <laughs> spoiler little, alert. Little Don't listen with your kids. Spoiler alert or caveat. If you're listening with your children right now, you might want to put headphones in or stop and listen another time if you're like listening in the car or something, because we're going to talk about a couple things that maybe are not good for children's ears. So pause here, <laughs> come back if that is you. Oh, I'm glad I thought of that before I started this part. <laughs> so um, anyways, with that in mind, um, when Zane was five or so, he came home from school and he was sitting down and he said, Mom, is Santa real? And I was like, oh, oh, here we are. We're, you're five. You're five. We're going there. We're going to have this funny enough, we didn't really do Santa in our house. In no. our house, my mom did Santa and grandpa- you know, well, grandparents I mean, and Santa friends. Was... And it, it was, we, but we never really said Santa wasn't real or real either. Like we never, yeah. we just kind of were in this middle place. Yeah. Present, we presence movies. in our, presence in our, from house. Us in our house. We're from us and from grandparents and things like that. So 
there was never really anything from Santa. Well, I think my so mom think... did do some stuff from Santa maybe yeah. at our house. Or in our house. In our though. house, yeah, exactly. Not necessarily um, if we go but somewhere But we still, else. I mean, we watched movies and things like that. I think we did, for Zane, we did this. We don't have any other pictures of our other kids with Santa. But, like, for oh, Zane, yeah, that's true. we did. I think we were like, that is, now that we think about it, that's a little creepy sitting them on some weird man's lap. But I do think with Zane, we might have had him go and sit on Santa's lap. But I think he was fairly young. I don't think he actually asked for yeah. gifts and stuff like that. But so here he comes with this question and I quickly have to go through all I mean I'm, I remember standing at the kitchen sink being like um do I tell him that what do I what do I because we right cause again we said we weren't gonna lie to our kids yeah. so it's like and so I turned around and I said truth, well I buddy what do you think and he went through this elaborate thing of like why he thinks the parents are Santa and he was like well it wouldn't be possible of like yeah. he's there's five no no he's five now this is Zane like so he just thinks from the beginning, he has thought very logical and scientific and everything. So he gave me all these literally scientific reasons why he thought there's no way there was no way like there's no possible way he could, you know, get through time zones and stuff like that and make it through and get through <laughs> all of them. And I'm, again, he was five when he was saying all this. And, um, you know, there's no physical way and science can't prove how he could get into a house without going through a door or a window. And what about people who live in apartments and don't have fireplaces? Yeah. And, you know, he went through this huge, I mean, he probably talked for 20 minutes and of all the reasons, why then of wasn't. all the reasons why. Yeah. And then he looked at me and he was like, so, is it all true? Is he not real? And I was like, I think you already have the answer, Zane. And he was like, oh, okay. And I was like, well, but the thing is, is now you are in a level with adults. And you know that, and we, I explained, like, this is where Santa actually originated from. Mm, um, yeah. And what the whole story is behind it. Um, but, you know, it, what it's morphed into now. And I said, but you have to remember that, like, your friends don't know that. And mm -hmm. most of them don't know that. And so that's not something you go to school and talk about. And if it's brought up, you can just say, yeah, like, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Or just change the subject. Or change or the or subject whatever. or something. But we kind of let it be like you're in the adult secret now. Mm -hmm. um, you know an adult secret. And so because he had cousins and stuff that did believe in Santa. Um, and so we were like, you know, when they say it's from Santa and they ask you what is from Santa, you can just pick a gift and say that mm -hmm. or something like that so that they, you know, um, it doesn't become an issue. So that was the first time of like a question that I think like really floored me of like, oh gosh, here we are already. And he's five. And I did not think we'd get there that quick with that. Yeah, um, definitely. and so obviously there have been <laughs> many more questions since then um, that have come up from all of our kids. Um, but then we had a recent one. Um, so <laughs> what this means for the all questions are okay is like we have, and maybe that's a conversation we could have on another podcast. Mm -hmm. um, we have introduced sex to our kids from a very early age. Now that does not mean... <laughs> We were yeah. like full detail of everything yeah, from we, a young age. We found like some really good resources as far as like what are age appropriate things to talk about yes. at certain stages of their life. And so, but it's, it's been a, it's been a conversation that we haven't shied away from. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, when, you know, um, or I don't even remember when it was, it was probably at least for the boys. It was when I got pregnant every time that it was introduced yeah, yeah, to true. them. I'm like, yeah. how did that happen? How does that baby get in there? Those kind of things. And so we started off with the whole idea of like a, um, a seed is planted kind of thing, not saying where that any of that came from or anything like that. Yeah. But that like a male has a seed, a woman has, you know, like the soil and that kind of thing. And then a baby grows that way. They normally, it was funny enough, during their different ages, they didn't ask like, how does that happen? Yeah, they then? didn't ask follow-up questions. Like, you know, like, as they got older, clearly they asked follow-up questions. And, but even before they got to that, like we would talk, like we started to talk more in their age appropriateness. So clearly again, we have 14 to seven. And so... Um, the age range is very different mm -hmm. on what they understand and that kind of thing. But again, we want them to know, like, we are a safe place to come. And if you hear something at school, ask us what it means. We might have to Google it, but we would rather Google it than you because I don't want you ended up on mm -hmm. something you didn't mean to end up on and that kind of thing. Um, so with that recently... And, and I think, too, I think with just even the subject of sex, like, we didn't really want to create this, like... Shame shame behind it or this awkwardness with it or you know something that they have to hide mm -hmm. um i think we just wanted to really create an environment where it's it's just another thing that we have a conversation about and it's okay and, and it's 
And it's good to talk about it. Exactly. And And we do have weird questions come up at our dinner table sometimes because of that. I mean, we have one recently that we were like, actually, I don't know that we know the full meaning of that. And so Mm. let's Google it together and let's understand. And like, we were like, um, I mean, there wasn't, this one wasn't a particular one that we were worried about like pictures coming up or anything, but it was like, oh, I think we all should understand what that means. Yeah. Um, and that kind of thing. And, you know, even for Veda, I don't know how much she digested on that, but, Mm -hmm. you know, again, it was age appropriate and it was okay for her. There would be other things that Zane has come to us and said, like, uh, my friends are saying this or, you know, yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely definitely at a different level and he's, he's at a different level, but he's also definitely come to us in a different setting. Exactly. Like, yeah, not where it's a little bit more personal between, you know, the three of us Mm -hmm. rather than um you know with everyone because he yeah. understands that he understands that that there is certain appropriatenesses with certain types of conversations exactly with his brother and sister yeah so, so more recently <laughs> uh we were having a conversation at our dinner table and sex came up somehow i don't even know maybe maybe it was that somebody had had a baby or somebody was pregnant or something like that so all that got everyone talking about things and and that kind of stuff. Um, and then one of our kids said, well, you only do that to make babies, right? And we were like, uh, no, actually, like, like we, you don't just do it to have babies. Like, yeah. it's enjoyable and stuff like that. Um, and so they kind of like left it at that. We didn't have, we didn't go into any more detail and things. But then when I was tucking this child up to bed, they said, I have a question. And I was like, sure. And I mean, that is often bedtime. I'll tell you what is when the questions come out. Like, yeah. Oh, and it's sure. often more serious questions too that you're like, I don't, ha- I don't know. What I'm processing like, that right now. Where is that question yeah. when we <laughs> say, so "How was your day?" Or we're sitting at the dinner table where it actually makes sense to have some conversation about yeah, it's this. Usually kind of a stuff. bedtime Not when you're like, "Just go to bed." When we really need you to go to sleep. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. It ends up being great conversation time. Uh, but this child said, um, "I have a question about sex," and I was like, "Sure. What do you, you know, thinking? Yeah. Okay." Um, and they said, when do you and daddy actually do that? <laughs> yeah. And where do you do that? And do you do it when we're at school or do you do it at <laughs> night? And I was like, and I, first of all, I had to hold back laughing because it was so <laughs> funny. I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe my child's asking me this right now. Um, and I said, you know what, you know how mommy and daddy, always say that you can ask us any question yes. anytime and we will tell you i said this might be the time that i do not tell you when mommy and daddy do that because that's not information you need to know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they left it for a little bit and then like i think like i so we taught a little conversation they're like but seriously like is it when we're when? at school <laughs> again <laughs> this is information you don't need to know oh, so there are times even though we have this all questions anytime will always answer that i realized yes. oh we might have some caveats uh, there, well they can ask be. the question they totally could ask the question but i said you know i think you don't need to know that right now yeah that's maybe when you're <laughs> married and you have questions about that kind of stuff you can ask us those things but currently <laughs> that's not information you're uh, you, you need to know so yeah <laughs> And there was another child in the room at the same time those questions were being asked. And they said, please don't answer that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, don't worry. I'm not answering that. <laughs> uh, so funny. So when you do have that role, which I'm so thankful we have because we have had just... We've had a really good conversation. Such good conversations with our kids. And sometimes they do it when other people are around. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. Yeah, I guess we're going to have this conversation. I guess we're going to have this conversation yeah. with other people at our dinner table. Um, and we've explained, you know that's that's you know something we do in our house if they have friends over and they're asking certain questions though that we're like not sure if that friend's family maybe has had conversations and stuff that we're like you know what we'll talk about that later yeah yeah, yeah. or sometimes they'll ask a question out in public Uh, that's the other thing too why our kids decide when we're walking through a crowd sometimes because they've seen something or something like that Mm. of like they'll ask a question sometimes overly loud and we're like um (laughs) Yeah, especially very, if it's... Very, good question. I love that you're curious, but can we answer that mm-hmm. when we're, like, more at home or something like that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, I think sometimes, too, in situations kind of like that, we might guide them and say, especially if it's, like, with something, like, with another person or a situation that's happening, and if it's, if it's an appropriate opportunity, we might guide them to asking that question to that person or that you True. know that situation so it might open up something even like even cooler 
Um, you know, because again, I think what we're trying to do with our kids is to create, you know, curiosity in our family, you mm -hmm. know, really trying to um, cultivate that idea of, you know, being, being a person that asks really good questions that you, again, I think we were talking about, you know, learning and being constant and constant opportunity to learn that then we can, you know, we're going to grow as a person. And so that's really kind of what is at the heart of this. We just want our kids to be curious and, and, and again, t for our house to be safe um, for those questions or yeah, just, just for them to be curious, I think is such a huge win. I heard, I think it was a training I did once, um, and it was people with different abilities. And so there was somebody, I think that was in a wheelchair. There was somebody that had had a really bad burn um, when they were like a teenager or something. So their face had lots of scarring on it and everything. Mm. And there were a couple other people, but those two stuck out to me because the question was asked, like, how do we help kids? For instance, this is something that happens a lot. Like you're in a situation with a child, no matter their age. Um, and they see something they've never seen before, especially something like that, that it's a different ability than like what they're used mm, to seeing. Yeah. And so often like either they'll like ask really loudly, like mom, why are they in a wheelchair or what's that thing on their face or something like that? And you as a parent feel mortified because mm. you don't want them calling out somebody like that. Mm -hmm. And these two individuals share that like the, they can't stand when that happens. And then the parents shoo the kids away. Yeah. Um, that they're like, that makes them feel worse of like, oh, they're scared to talk to me. Um, and of course, the, I, I think, you know, we have done this. And so we've approached it very gently because there are some people that don't want to talk about it. Sure. And that's okay. And so that's a respect thing. But like we've had that happen several times with our kids where they've been curious mm -hmm. about something like that. Like, why does that person look that way? Or or um, what, what, what happened to them or that kind of thing. And I will walk up with them if we feel like it's right. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you got to pay attention to cues people are giving off of, sure. or you're not interrupting them in the middle of a meal or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I will walk up and say, my son, like, well, I'll say, you know, like, let's go, let's go ask them. Let's see what their story is. And so mm -hmm. then I've walked with them to the person and said, I'm sorry to interrupt, or, you know, please tell me if you don't have time or if you're not feel comfortable answering this question. But like my son had a question um, for you, would you mind if they asked? And like, and I help our kids like ask the question um, and stuff like that. And in general, when that has happened, it has opened up such a cool conversation um, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing um, of, of with people. And then it gives them an opportunity to share their story or yeah. our kids to say, like, I remember doing this one time in a store that we were in and there was somebody that was in a wheelchair and they only had one leg as well. Um, and one of our sons, I think it might've been Zane had said like, Can, what happened to your leg? Um, and the person, there was some disease they had gotten or something like that. They had to have their leg amputated. And, but then they were able to say like, oh, by the way, like I'm learning, I'm starting to learn how to walk and have, um, a, oh my gosh, wife completely. A prosthetic Thank leg. you. Yeah. I had completely, I completely blanked on the name of it. Prosthetic leg and stuff. And him and Zane had this cool little conversation that instead of what could have happened is Zane like was staring a lot. I mean, he really was because yeah. I think it was the first time he had seen somebody not have a full leg. Mm -hmm. um, he was staring a lot and everything like that. And I could tell. And I said, Zane, do you have a question? And he was like, I don't understand where the person's leg is. I'm like, how do they drive and how do they do this? And started asking all these questions. And I said, well, let's go see if he's willing to talk to us. And then this person was. We have had people say, yeah. oh, I mean, I've had one person give me a really nasty look and just walk away. Mm hmm fine like that's was i know from my heart and our kids heart that was not our intention sure um when i said we have a question um and they may have had a really bad experience and so i get that but almost almost 100 percent of the time people are really responsive and really really cool um mm -hmm. of how they respond it's like that again you got to pay attention to social cues but so that is another part of it of also saying like it's okay to ask other people questions mm -hmm. too but they have a choice to answer it or not just yeah. like we do um but that has just such a cool really opportunity cool to hear somebody else's story oh exactly and for our kids to experience that so and cool. because they're yeah. comfortable asking us questions like we said when we have people over Mm. They ask questions. I'm like, whoa, like I didn't even think of asking that question of this person yeah, or these definitely. people. And so that has turned out to be a very cool part of it too. So yeah, we, I, the funny thing came up of like the where, when, how, like, oh, you know, well, not how, but you know, they, that question I thought, oh, that's funny. But so, then yeah. it did make me think like, oh, it'd be good to share with you all just like how we do have that general. Yeah. Just ask anything. Yeah. Also, we reserve the right yeah. to not answer. It's, yeah. Sometimes it can get to a point where we're like, oh, yeah. And 
eh, that's gone too far possibly that you don't really need to know that but information i'm 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 happy and proud that they uh feel feel like comfortable and safe that they can ask those questions exactly. with us so that's exactly. that's what it's about so it's all about that it's all about hopefully that encourages you just like you know in your home and that kind of thing of just encouraging the idea of like it's okay to be curious and you know let's work on that together and and see what that looks like and um to ask things in loving and curious ways and also be able to respond yeah. that way and i think as as, well. when when we ask questions we become really good listeners so true so that's what it's all about isn't yeah. it yeah so be curious ask questions encourage your children to do the same <laughs> Thanks for joining us on today's episode of the Laurent Collective Podcast. If you enjoyed today's podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave a review, which helps others find our podcast. Continue the conversation with us over on Instagram at Laurent Collective. We look forward to going deeper than just surface talk with you again next week.